Hello and welcome to ProTrader Strategies Market Commentary for Tuesday, May the 23rd. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies you can implement in your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters, don't know what's in your portfolios, and therefore what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already, already doing. Please remember the past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. Anyway, on to the overall markets. We've got the flash PMIs coming out across the pond. Remember, flash PMI is well, one of their major indicators on purchasing managers index here in the United States. It's more of a lagger, so we don't really look at it. We really look at our Institute, Institute for Supply Management, PMI and uh, CPI numbers. So. Uh, our flash not important, their flash actually quite important. So let's get on with it. We've got the uh, flash PMI coming out of the European region, came in at uh, 54, expected to be 55, and the uh, French flash services PMI came in at 58 versus 56.8. Uh, we got the German flash PMI coming in at 55.2, the German uh, that was the German services, German manufacturing was 59.4, expected to be 58. And then we got the, for the overall European region, uh, flash PMI for the manufacturing side, 57 versus 56 and a half. And then the flash services PMI for the European region came in at 56.2, expected to be 55.5. Uh, then here in the United States, we have Kashikari speaking. We also got our own flash PMI numbers. Uh, manufacturing came in slightly under and services came in slightly over. The real thing to look at was manufacturing uh, out of the Richmond Fed manufacturing index came in at one, expected to be 15, so much lower than expected. But with this number, anything above one shows uh, improvement. If it goes negative, then that shows that there is contraction in a sense. And we also got the uh, new home sales came in at 569,000 units expected to be 611,000 units, but they did also revise uh, last month's up quite a bit from uh, 621,000 to 642,000. So those kind of offset each other, if you will. And we also have Kashikari speaking again today from the FOMC and Harker also speaking again today. So a uh, lot going on for the most part giving us a mixed bag across the board, really, in the equity side anyway. But uh, with the crude oil, we've got crude oil up about 13 cents on a day. Can't get above uh, this little area right here of $52. Get much above that, it's going to want to go straight to test this uh, value area high, which is very close to $53. So keep your eye on that 52.75 mark that's going to start acting as resistance for the bulls. And we do have... Uh, this really starting to uh, kind of tandemly run along a line right now, uh, trying to decide whether it's just going to kiss it or if it's going to cross it. Uh, and then on to gold futures. Gold is down on the day by a little over $7. Uh, again, coming back down to the point of control where the most time and volume has been spent. We're also seeing a lot of the gold miners pull up GDXJ, GDX. Uh, the gold GDX is the gold miners, uh, the bigger gold miners, the junior gold miners is GDXJ. So both of those having a bit of a pullback as well on today's move. Then we have uh, the bonds pretty much unchanged for the most part, down six points on the day in a pretty tight range for the all intents and purposes. Uh, really trailing off, not going to be able to break out of this range here. Uh, that we've been kind of talking about actually all the way down to 45, but 45 to uh, 55 is really where the range is. Uh, you'd say that it even broke out and make a tighter range, call it uh, 50 to or 49 to 54 uh, ish. So just kind of trudging right along the top of that area there. Uh, on to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, just up in the day by 36 points. Um, 
but you know, got to be very happy with itself being right here uh, at the point of control. That means even the shorts are happy, the longs are happy, everybody's happy right here at this area. NASDAQ, a little bit of a different story, slightly down negative on the day uh, by about four points, uh, while the Dow and the E-mini S&Ps are higher on the day. Uh, this is the chart of the E-mini S&Ps. As you can see, they're slightly in positive territory, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, pretty much back to what we saw uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago where we were just kind of trudging along sideways. This is the breakdown of the E-mini S&P on a 30 minute chart intraday uh, or throughout the, the overnight and the intraday section uh, all kind of split up here. So uh, at the end of the day, we're at near the highs of the day for the most part, really kind of calming down uh, after the open overnight session. Uh, after the economic data points came out, markets got a little wanky, but uh, at the end of the day, they're kind of settling down right now as those line, everything pretty much came in line with expectation, aside from that Richmond Fed manu or Richmond Manufacturing Index came in a lot lower than expected, but that one isn't as widely looked at as, say, for instance, maybe the new home sales, which came in line with expectations, they pretty much sold off on that initial uh, shock of that look number coming in much lower but when you start looking at the revisions I think people started putting that all together and the market started getting a bit of a comeback to it all right on to a few trades that I have done these are the ones that I've taken off and with XRT if you remember I got short some calls in there that were pretty uh, pretty decently aggressive I guess if you will uh, was when we had implied volatility above 30 it's now lost volatility in there which causes uh, allows that theta contraction to come out and directionality especially with today's move and with XRT I had on the June 43 calls that I was short originally at 26 cents bought them back for nine cents today in XRT so got my directionality took advantage of this high implied volatility um, you know just on the 17th so I pretty much got that spike in uh, volatility and volatility coming out made that able to cover that trade rather quickly you know even uh, better than my 50% of max profit I would be looking normally like 13 cents to get out of that today it really came in uh, able to get out for that nine cent uh, XLK which is the technology sector remember I, I thought that the technology sector was a little bit overdone also all of these ETFs uh, were getting a spike in volatility after the big sell-off in the broader market a uh, few days ago, like last week, uh, that caused volatility to spike. I started trying to take advantage of as much volatility spike as I could. Uh, a lot of these ETFs really were overdone to the upside. So I did that with uh, XLK, which was reason to get into that. June, I sold the 52 puts in there. And um, when the market popped back up, I originally had sold it for 26 cents, bought it back today for eight cents. Started to look like it was breaking down, especially with technology. Um, NASDAQ being down while the broader markets are up. You know, I just want to get out before there might be some kind of sector rotation from, say, uh, technology, which has been uh, seeing some all time highs across the board, into, say, the consumer staples, where we're seeing like Procter and Gamble and Kellogg really not having such a great. Uh, last couple of months and participating in the broader market, we could maybe start seeing some people try and take advantage of the high move in technology, roll into some of those ones that are beaten down, like the Procter & Gamble's, like I mentioned, so some of those consumer staples. If that's the case, we're going to see XLK come up and the consumer staples sector start to push higher, which would be benefited uh, in the Dow and the S&Ps, as opposed to NASDAQ, which is pretty highly... Uh, involved in technology for the most part. And then on to a trade that I uh, took off. Uh, we got this spike on, on the earnings, which, you know, Deere did knock it out of the park, did really well, as did uh, Caterpillar. Caterpillar got the very similar move. If you remember, I played this to the upside. But it also looks like it's kind of uh, getting a little bit of Earlier today when I was doing this, it was starting to look like a, a pattern we used to call like a shooting star, uh, three star 
um, can't remember what, but basically it's like the star, uh, uh, three star alignment. Uh, today, now it's starting to push a little bit higher. Uh, as long as we kind of settle back down, uh, I'll be happy with it. But put on a defined risk strategy in there. Uh, it's got low implied volatility, as you can see, after the volatility crush of the uh, earnings, but went into the July. And um, in the July, I bought the 121 puts and then sold the 125 puts in there for a $3 credit. Uh, I actually, sorry, uh, that is not right. That's on my XLT in here. I don't know what I was talking about there. In Deer, I did the September and bought the 130 puts and then sold 115 puts for a $7.53 debit. Now, three cents over what I uh, was really looking to do in there. You know, 750 would be right there at the 50% with them, the spread, but I uh, decided to give up those extra couple pennies to get the trade rather than to get the penny. Uh, and as the market's pushing higher, that's might even be able to get that a little bit better. That's all I got for you guys today. Uh, the video on Friday, or we're going to be doing a, another webinar on Friday, even though it's a holiday. So go to potraderstrategies.com and sign up for that. And if you can't take that, take it easy. <laughs>